silicone. No silicone. No silicone. No silicone. Keeping it raw, keeping it real, 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 real. Alright, cool. So I'm about to get into it with um, Alex, aka Big Guns Diesel, aka Kill Your Excuses. Um, a lot of our conversations as a people has mostly been around the problem. You feel me? And I think one thing is the problem is it's it's definitely worth talking about it because apparently a lot of people didn't know that there was a problem. A lot of people outside our race they didn't know that there was a problem. That's what I'm hearing the most. Like most of them are saying, "Oh, I didn't know it was that bad. I didn't know it was that bad." That's like a common theme right now. Um, so it's always worth talking about the problem firstly, but I feel like there aren't enough conversations to talk about solutions. You feel me? There aren't enough conversations talking about how we can fix what we know is clearly and explicitly an issue. You know what I mean? So like um, the, the, the direction of this conversation is to talk more about solutions. We're going to speak about some of our problems. You feel me? That some people might not know about. But a lot about the, the solutions as well, which like complaining is one thing. Complain, complain, complain all you want. But then when the hype dies down or when the officers get arrested or when like, you know, less cameras are around to spot things, then the problems are still going to be there if people don't focus on solutions. And me and Alex have been going back and forth about this for a while. And um, he's a very learned and, ex and experienced guy. And Alex has a kid himself and a wife, you feel me? And um, his life story is pretty interesting as a whole. Um, So I'm going to introduce you guys to Alex and um, we'll take it from there. Hope you enjoy the conversation. We're good, we're good. How you doing, bro? Yeah, I'm all good, man. I'm, go I'm good, man. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, man. Thanks for joining, bro. Hey, pleasure, man. Pleasure. Oh, pleasure to have you on in any any capacity, man. Yo, bro, let's talk, man. So, what's your take on everything that's been happening so far, man? Like, when you first saw that video and stuff, or when you first heard about it, like, um, yeah, what was your reaction and what, what was the feelings like with yourself and with your family? And stuff? Obviously, like, when I saw the video, it is, um, I wasn't surprised, you know, because obviously it's not the it's not the first situation you've seen in America where cops have acted in a certain way that's quite irrational, you know, and obviously abuse of power to be. In fact, when I saw it initially, when I saw the video, I didn't even look at it like it was um, a black guy on the floor and a white cop on his neck, and I I just saw like a power hungry individual like tripping, like it was in my view, like he was just flexing, like I've got the power to. Put yeah. my neck and my knee in your neck. I'm not moving it. So, like, at the time, I'd even obviously I could see, you know, there's obviously like a racial element to it, but that wasn't even on my forefront. I just, I was just thinking to myself, like, look at this arrogant prick who's thinking he's like the big man now, do you mean? Because he's got a uniform on, you know. Yeah. And obviously, naturally, like, when you see those videos, you sort of, um, you imagine yourself, right, in that situation, mm. you know, you think, well, like, you know, like. That, that could be, like, that like, yeah, like you, know, like, you know, imagine if that was you, and then obviously, like, you know, what would you do, mm -hmm. you know? Obviously, this case was quite bad, right, because he was, there's nothing he could have done yeah. to stop that. Completely so obviously, like, you, know, you know, so you see things where people are resisting, and the force gets used, and you think, oh, you know what, if you stop resisting, maybe the force will stop. Yeah. But when he wasn't doing that, you you're thinking, that. oh, then, like, there's literally nothing this guy could do yeah. Like to stop, like this guy's hell bent on just keeping his knee on his neck. So, yeah. yes, you know, you know, it, it was a sad thing to look at, but at the same time, I don't think there's any person who's reasonable, mm. white, black, and in between, who thought that was okay. Like I haven't met anyone yet who tried yeah. to justify it or excuse it. Yeah. So right. you know, for the, the most part, thing, the, first, the first thing you said, like when you said, like you weren't too surprised. For me, it was more of a case of like. Yeah, it's like there's something inherently that we all know as black guys that, bruh, this stuff happens. And the sad thing is that it's almost normalized to an extent. Like, even here in the UK, when you see, like, black guys getting pulled over, when you see, like, black guys getting rushed and all this stuff, like, it's not as bad as the US on the surface, like I keep saying. But when you see stuff like that happening, you're like, yeah, it's we're desensitized. So to me, when the public is surprised by all this stuff, I'm like, what the hell have you been all this time? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's mad weird to me, man. But like, it's it's also interesting because you've been a bodybuilder, right? So you're a very very strong person, right? Like, yeah. you, you lift mad amounts of weight, and then you see some skinny, scrawny um, police officer with his neck—I mean, with his knee on this big guy's neck. This guy's six foot plus, 
And it's a power play, like you said. It's just some guy trying to play bully because he has a position of power. Yeah. You know, but, you know, and that's something that you see in, like, various walks of life, right? You know, someone has, like, a bit of authority in a role, mm. and they sometimes just choose to use that above you, do you mean, and try and prove a point, you know, whatever that point is, you know. And obviously, the reason for them behaving that way, we'll never know. Like, mm. it could be something from their past. Like, we don't know what, obviously, Worries they're drawing yeah. from, you, you know. So you never understand me, like, you know, like, you know, you might remind them of someone they dislike. <laughs> or someone you have an experience with so there's so like, like there's so many reasons as to why yeah, you, know, you know things can go out and you know how they are and this is the thing like i think yeah sometimes like an instinct inside me says like who cares about the reason wrong is wrong but at the same time sometimes looking at the reason could be where we can find the solution if that makes sense yeah well the reason has to be looked at right because to to ignore the reason is irresponsible when you're trying to deal with an issue. Mm. Yeah? Because that means to want to ignore the reason means that you're willing to bypass the facts of the matter mm. and just go off how you feel and your emotions to then come to a conclusion, you know, which obviously it doesn't really get you anywhere. Do you mean? Because you can do that and you can arrive at that conclusion, mm. but that conclusion is not a solution. Do you, know, you know what I'm saying to you? Because like, until you address you know, the, the actual true facts of the matter, whether, you, you, know, whether yeah. you like it or not, you know, you don't really make any progress. 100%, 100%. No. So let's talk about progress, bro, because you and I, we've gone back and forth over here in terms of what we think the potential solutions could be, right? Yeah. Um, someone said the cause of the problem is the source of the action, 100%. You can't ignore the root. So in terms of solutions, right, black people are always talking about, you know, it's messed up what's happening to us. They don't care about us. The mad ignorant, da, 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 but no one's proposing fixes. And this is what you came at me with. And you're like, yo, listen, we need to talk about fixing. So if we start there, bro, like, what was going through your mind in that, in that sense? Yeah, so obviously at first, you know, let's decide what needs fixing, right? So what are the issues that black people feel affects us, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what are, the, like, what are these issues? I mean, so we have to lay them out. So obviously, let's put racism in there because obviously that's a big one right now. So yeah. we put that in there. Then we put in racial solidarity in there as well, you know, put that in there. Then we put in crime in there, you know. We put in violence in there, you know. Mm -hmm. We put in education in there, you know. We put in economic, um, you know, disparities in there as well. So we have to outline what the issues are. Mm. And then for each issue, how can we, how can we solve this? Do you mean? Right. Right. So, and the funny thing is the most awkward one to solve, right? You know, is one everyone's banging on about, right? Racism. Racism. Yeah. yeah. Now, syst like, systematically, like in the West, you know, so I wanted to say the West, which is obviously like, you know, UK, America, mm -hmm. you know, um, racism, I think everyone can agree that racism and any kind of bigotry mm. is not publicly endorsed, right? Yeah, not, you public, know? not publicly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know I mean, so like, so then, I mean, wherever you work, if you're found to be taking part in any of this kind of stuff, you probably will lose your job, yeah? And people probably don't stand for it. You know, so we have to look at it like that was something that wasn't there once upon a time. Mm -hmm. uh, once upon a time, you you know, I mean, I didn't see it, but my granddad saw it, you know, when he came over here, where there were signs and places saying, you know, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, we didn't go through that, you know. We haven't been kept out of schools over here for being black. Yeah. We haven't been kept out of, um, you know, gyms for being black, shops for being black, you know. Yeah. You might not have got certain jobs you applied for. You might have assumed it was because you were black. <laughs> you mean? But, yeah, yeah. You but know, it's, it's definitely not you know, as bad as not, you, you know, but that's not a fact, right? You know, it's an opinion, you know, yeah. on, you know on an issue. So, so then to say that, so to, to then go off this narrative that the system is just racist as a whole, mm. I think it's, um, it's a misapplication of facts, right? It's not, you know, and it's not helpful, you know, because the system as a whole isn't racist, you know. Would, is, is there a possibility that you might have racist individuals within that system? Yeah, of course, because how you choose to behave is what's on your mind, you know. Mm. 
and I can't legislate that. No one can. You know, I can control you and what you do and how you think. So we need to be able to deal with these things and people as individuals. Do you get what I'm saying yeah. to you? Yeah. So, I mean, the fact that that happened over there and there was outrage mm -hmm. and now obviously all four guys have been arrested and charged shows you that it's not publicly endorsed, you know, mm -hmm. and it can't be ignored. You know? Now, if the system was completely and totally racist, like we all think, mm -hmm. those guys won't get charged arrested at all, you know? Well, this, this, this is the thing. I feel like... 100% it's not publicly endorsed, but I also like, feel like, if, if not for, like, the outrage that um, all these, like, black Americans have basically taken now, yeah. I don't know if these guys will actually be, be um, arrested, bro. Yeah, no, but, but, but also, you know, look at the outrage, you know, the outrage was by everyone, yeah? Mm. In, like, you know, in America, the black population is under 50 million, right? Mm. The white population is 10, 50 million, so mm. five to one. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It was also part of their outrage that gave this the global audience it got. Mm -hmm. So then, so then to then paint everyone with the same brush that everyone's racist, everything's racist. It's um, it's not accurate, Jermaine. You know, it's not an accurate description. You know, of course some people are Jermaine, but it's not an accurate description. Okay. You know, and that's my problem. With things is like you know we can't, you know, like there isn't anywhere in the world right now, any country, any any system that is functioning perfectly, right? Do you know I mean? Mm -hmm. So, obviously, in the UK and in America, you know, we've got a system, you know, it works fairly okay. Mm -hmm. It's far from perfect, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that has to be changed in there. There's a lot that has changed in there. Mm -hmm. But we can't throw it away as a whole, you know, by just saying it's a racist system. Mm -hmm. Because the fact of the matter is, a lot of us are safer and better off over here mm -hmm. than in other places. You mean like so? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not, it's so, so it's not yeah, it's not completely used to system that like everyone's making out to be. Well, not everyone, but a lot of people are making out to be, and you know, labeling things like it's just completely racist. Do you mean? Yeah, I guess. In you know, and I'm not, you know, and I'm not defending. Like, I'm yeah. I'm not trying to defend racism, you know, mm. on any account. Mm. Yeah, because I've dealt with myself in my personal life. Do you mean so? It's not something that I'm trying to you know condone. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I, I believe that no one of sound mind condones it either. But what you're saying, what you're, what you're saying is that, like, in order to address the problem, we shouldn't go and put everyone under under the same roof and just assume yeah. everyone's racist. Mm -hmm. I think I think there is a core understanding that not everyone is racist, right? Not everyone that's not black is racist. But where does that take us next? Though? Like, if we have an understanding that okay, not everyone's racist, where does that take us in terms of solutionizing the people that are? Well, what it does is. The people that are racist, you cannot change them from how they think. They have to want to change themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What we can do is create an environment where they are not comfortable to act in that way. Mm. Yeah. You know, which means everyone publicly ostracizing people who behave in that way. That's mm -hmm. all you can do. You can't change someone's mind, but you can make them uncomfortable, you know, in society and in, our, you know, and in our environment, you know, to behave in that way. Mm. So that's what we can do with that, you know. Nothing else can be done with that situation. That there's nothing else that can be done. You can't change, you know, someone's mind and how they behave. But yeah. you can make the environment not comfortable for them or suitable for them, you know, to practice that, you know, that behavior. Okay, so you're basically saying that, um, fine, you can't, you can't train... Um, you can't teach old dog new tricks, but you can make an environment such that if that old dog repeats its old tricks, it will get punished for it. And yeah. That would be the deterrent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you know, it, yeah, and, and that means that you don't turn a blind eye to racism, whether it's from the white person to you or from you to the white person, you know. It, it means if you're at home and your mom or your dad say something ignorant, you know, you put up, you know, you put up about that, you know, you let them know that they can't sit around you mm. and speak in such a manner, you know. Mm. And that's what I'm saying, like, so it's a cultural change, right, that affects all of us, yeah, whether you're white, black, Asian, everyone, you know. So if you're Asian, you know, and in your home or whatever, you know, you know or in your circle of friends, people think it's okay to make some kind of references that are racist, mm -hmm. you have to pull that up, you know. Mm -hmm. If you're white, same thing. If you're so you black, have to hold, you have to hold people accountable to the yeah, yeah, yeah. not letting people yeah. go. So I, I guess that makes sense, right? Because a lot, of, a lot of these outrage 
um, situations are coming from the fact that a lot of Americans feel like these guys have been getting away with the same shit for such a long time, and now we need to speak up. And what you're basically saying is that if you implement some form of deterrence, then it won't yeah. happen again. It's like, it's like teaching um, a, a kid not to misbehave, right? If you allow the kid to, to keep getting away with shit, they'll keep doing that until they grow old. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, so obviously... So, so, that, that comes into policy, right? That would potentially come into the, um, the concept of crimes against humanity. You're saying that should stretch potentially to the extent of this, this form of racism because that would be the only way it can actually be enforced if it becomes legalized to, to that extent. The consequences, to some extent. Yeah, well, I believe that legally, you know, if something is blatantly wrong, you know, let's really say so... The legal system is a game, right? Do you know what I mean? So when you go into the you know, into the courts for, for a charge, mm -hmm. what determines you get enough or on or how long you get is now a game between who's you know who's got the best lawyers. Yeah. Do you mean so there's, there's so, a finance <laughs> Yeah, do you mean? So again, mm -hmm. so if we're gonna you know judge the outcome of things, we have to judge it properly and not just in a one dimensional way. Do you know what I mean, you know, like you could, like, you know, me and you, like, right, say, say, you mean, say, say you're white and I'm black, right, you know, and we're involved in a fight. We both get charged. We go to court, you know. You get a caution. I get two years, you know. If you went and hired, you know, a good lawyer, and I would have a legal aid lawyer, mm. yeah, that's the reason why I yeah. got two years and you got off. 100%. You know what I mean? So sometimes we have to look like, just so just because, like, there's a racial implication, right, at the end, of a decision that happens mm. doesn't mean that racism in itself was used in arriving at that, that you know end you know end result right. like for most issues in this world right it's you know most issues are nuanced right so there's always more than one mm -hmm. thing like there isn't a single you know way or a single reason mm -hmm. why we can explain something you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like there's always multiple layers to things right i mean so if i look at America now, I say, right, the numbers show that more white guys get killed by the police than black guys. Mm -hmm. Cool, fine. That's okay now because obviously well, it's not okay, but it's fine in the sense that the population is different anyway. Do you mean so we're lower population rights you know, than the white males over there? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's worse or better, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we look at conviction rates of these cops. In America, the conviction rates of cops is generally low. Mm -hmm. And it's low regardless of whoever the victim is. So that means if you're a white male and you get killed by the cops over there, the conviction rate for that cop is still very low. Yeah. And same with a black person. So this means that the conviction rates of cops being low over there is not solely based on racism. You know, it's a system of cops protecting cops, right? You know, they have a system where they look after each other, you yeah, know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, and in certain jobs and certain roles, they would regard certain things as collective damage, you know, mm -hmm. or collateral, you know, you know, or collateral damage, right? Do you mean, mm -hmm. you know, so again, we can't then just scream out that the reason, you know, cops, you know, kill black people is because the system's racist and they won't get convicted. You know, they don't get convicted in in most cases for anything. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So that system is corrupt in itself, and there's no accountability in there. So then what that system needs is a system of checks and balances, right? You know, you know, you know, I mean, in, you know, independent complaints commissions, you know, to investigate people fully and hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. That's what it needs. Not shouting racism only, which gives us no solution to anything. Yeah. You know, because that's not the reason why they aren't being convicted, you know, it's because they have the ability to cover up most things once they do it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, obviously it's getting harder now with body cams and stuff, but these, you know, body cams and things are new, you know, a uh, new part of the game now, you know. It wasn't always there years ago. Yeah. So cover-ups have always been pretty easy to do. Do you, yeah. you, you, you get what I mean? You know, and besides, the home 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 home. police in USA are not vetted as in-depth as our police force in the UK. Exactly, yeah. You know, and that's a problem, you know, cause that, and that's why you have, you know, incompetent cops slipping through the nets. Because when you have these issues of police brutality happening, it's down to incompetent cops, mm -hmm. not just racist cops. Because you've seen black cops in that, you know, smash up black guys in America, mm. you know, or Hispanic cops, do you know what I mean? So it's a uniform issue. It's not just like a race issue, do you know what I mean? Now, of, now you know, are there possibly um, racist police officers over there? Of course, without a doubt, 
they are, you know. But how are they? You know, how are they there? You know, I mean, why is this guy? You know, the, you know, the main guy that got charged in the George Floyd case. Why has he got a rap sheet so long? You know, and why was he still in the front line with that record he's got on there? You know, he should be like, you know, if we've got three complaints against you, they should put you on admin work in the office. Like, you shouldn't be out on the front line. You know, until that's resolved within a certain time, you know, you know, time period. You know, the fact that people yeah. can have all these things in the records and we can see their character, but they're still allowed in the front line. That's the problem. Yeah, because until we stop this from happening, there's a possibility that things that further, that more things will happen down the line, right? Do you mean so? The issue is not just being angry and outraged. Is we you know we have to stop these people being able to be incompetent and still keep their jobs and stay in their jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's a case of refining the system. The the, the it's like it's like in any other job, right? Like um, before before you actually get the role, there need to be as you mentioned checks and balances, right? And the processes need to be pretty intense, especially now more so than ever when you're looking at what these police officers are getting. Um, get in trouble for doing that whole filtration system of joining the force needs to be some next level stuff including someone mentioned here as well something about the mental health checks as well because what's the mental yeah. state of the people that you're hiring to look after your, your community yeah a lot of people are just happy right so if a lot of people just use the force to, to get a badge and to get status in order to allow them to do something of course yeah you know you know because again you know some of these guys I said you know <laughs> we don't know their history like some isn't some people are assholes, right? End of, yeah. And if you look at history, you know, for as long as we've been here as human beings, we've had oppression, right? Yeah. You know, because whether we like to believe it or not, you know, we, I mean, we like to believe that everything's perfect, everyone's equal. People don't, people don't see themselves that way, right? People, you know, we have racism, we have classism, we have elitism you know we have all kinds of isms you mean like you know someone you know someone looked down at you because you went to this uni and they went to that uni you know so they think that you know they are more intelligent than you you know do you know what I mean so it's like there's always a way people try and elevate themselves above other people right do you mean you know it's so it's you know, so it's, you know, you know it's there like you know human beings you know human beings behave in like a compare and contrast manner right do you mean so it's like like listen like there's there's say you got a neighborhood right do you mean so in this neighborhood, it's mainly white, you know, and they're mainly doctors and lawyers and stuff. That's fine. Now, so these are now middle class to upper class individuals. Mm. Now you have a white person who is working class, but he's a tradesman, right? A plumber or a builder. Mm. And he's been very successful and made a lot of money. So he's now in their tax bracket, right? Mm -hmm. But they still view him as a lower class, you know, because he's still working class, mm -hmm. yeah? And they don't, you know, and they don't want that guy in their neighborhood next to them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, same way you can be black and successful, you know, and be in that same neighborhood and your neighbors don't want you there because they don't see you as the same, like, you know, they don't think that you got here the way they got there. Do you get what I'm saying to you? So this is something that's always going to be there. Like, you know, it's, I think it's a fallacy to want to believe that it will go away and, you know, like one day, everything will be equal, right? Because it can't be equal. So what can then, we do? But, like... then, but then I hear that, right? E equality or um, university equality might be a foreign concept that might not actually happen. But then again, we're talking what? about between races, right? I know you said mm -hmm. like, it's broader than just, um, you know, a racial thing. But in this context, we're looking at inequality in terms of race, which is a very, very apparent thing. You get what I'm saying? It's not just inequality between people. I hear that will always exist. But then if it can be fair inequality between people, then fair enough. But it does definitely seem to be more skewed between the races. Yeah, between the races, you know, but we can say that, but the, the numbers don't show that, you know, we have more white people being racist towards black people than vice versa. You know what I'm saying to you? Like, numbers don't show that, you know. Now, your experience might reflect that mm. because maybe everyone who's around you it's similar to you, right? I mean, so mm. that's what you're exposed to. So mm. that's what you see, and that's what you know, and that's how you view things, right? But mm. in the same, this, in, in a quick way, like you know, I remember when I was younger, yeah, I went mm. to, I, I went to a concert in um, Hammersmith, mm. and I went, and I went there with, like two of my white friends, you know, and um, my white friend Chris got attacked as we came out of the station to get robbed because he was white. 
mm. by a black person in the area. Do you mean? Mm. Mm. So we're scrapping and fighting now. Do you mean over this stuff? Do you mean you know? But it's like we came out together, you know. And the only reason he got picked on, you know, was because he was white and most everyone around was black. Do you mean you know? So he was seen as like an easy target. Do you get what I'm saying to you? You right. know. He got he so got picked on by who? Black people, black boys from oh. you know from Hammersmith. Yeah. You know what I'm saying to you? You know. And it's like they, you know, try to like, you know, attack him and rub him. Also, going to a big fight and everything else, and that, you know. But that was the way they dealt with it, mm -hmm. you know. Now, on the same side of things, I've been rushed by white boys before. Do you mean, you know, mm -hmm. like for no fucking reason? Like I was at a bus stop, you know, you know, waiting for a bus. I was like 15, 16, I was in year eleven, so whatever that, you know, whatever that puts me. And um, the bus pulls up, three boys coming out. I didn't think nothing of it. I'm just minding my business because I, I, I don't know them anyway. And the next thing I know, you know, I get clocks right, you know, in the back of my, you know, in the back of my head. Mm. So we're turning around fighting. So I've been, you know, I've been rushed by white boys before, you know. Now I can look in there and go, oh, that was a racist attack. Mm. It might have been right because obviously he's three white guys and me. Mm. But I don't know these guys. But also, it could be a mistaken identity, right? You know, they could think I was someone else that had an issue, you know, that they, that they had an issue with, right? Do you mean? Mm -hmm. So. In that case, you know, what might have um, provoked that may not have been racist, you know. They might have had a run-in with someone who they thought was me before for whatever reason, and they might have been acting in self-defense or retaliation. I, mean, I, I don't know what you mean, but mm -hmm. I'm just saying that there's always multiple ways to look at things, right? Do you mean, you know, and typically the lens of what you carry around is how you're going to see things, you know. And right. sometimes the lens you put over your face doesn't always make things right. Do you know what I'm saying to you? So... I said, like, you know, so sometimes you're looking at things and it's not as objective as you think, you know, mm. and it's not as fair as you think, you know, and it's not as um, truthful as you think. Mm. You know what I'm saying to you? <clears throat> I'm going to yeah. double back, right? I think you made, you made um, a few good points. And I think one of the biggest things that I push on my page, on my podcast and in life is just open your mind and broaden your horizons, right? There's more than one way to see things. It's about perspective, right? Um, and I guess a lot of people will be counter arguing that and say, look, it's plain as day, though. You saw what happened to that guy um, recently. He got killed in front of the police, in front of the cam, everything. You can't argue that. But I, I'm going to I'm I'm rewind, right? You made a point about um, the police getting checked properly or um, them doing the fil filtering properly before they, before they give them the badges. And I mentioned the concept of, yeah, even mental health checks. And then some people were saying, like, you know, mental health checks, not in the beginning, but ongoing ongoing check-in process to make sure that this person is still worthy of the badge and still a, a valid officer kind of thing. Yeah, it has to be, right? Because, I mean, obviously, we know that a lot of people who work in law enforcement suffer PTSD, right? Do you mean? Mm. Whether they're soldiers or police, you know what I mean? So there has to be constantly checking to see who's actually still in a good place to do that job, right? Do you mean? It's like, you know... I'm, I'm sure you heard about the um, the two black snappers, right, in America that mm. were bringing up, you know, 999 for domestic abuse. And then when the police were turning up, you know, they were snapping them in, you know, and shooting the white cops. Mm. 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 Now, these were professional, you know, officers that were trained over there. Now, mm. however, there's something that had gone wrong mentally for them, do you mean? Because that's not known behavior. I'm saying to you, so as I'm saying, like, so there are cracks in the system. And, you know, I think, like, it should be, People need to be, um, you know, checked, you know, quite frequently when you're in jobs that are, are high demanding mentally. Yeah. So someone said um, classism is not talked about in the media because journalists tend to be middle class. It's inconvenient for them. Um, someone said, I think in general, we've been looking at things in multiple ways. It could be why it's gone on for so long. After a while, you have to see for what it is. So she's basically saying that it's not as broad as you think it is, that it's a bit more narrow and we can't ignore the things that are right in front of us sometimes. Okay, so I mean, like, why do you think that? Like, is that, you know, is that an opinion that we have because we feel that way? Or is that what the actual facts show us? You know, this is, I mean, like, you no, know, no, we have to be able to sort of deal with issues with facts rather than how we feel. Because sometimes you might feel that way and you might see it that way, but it's your perspective, right? You know, and depending on where you're at, you know, our view is limited. You know what I'm saying to you? So we have to really go by what we have, which is facts. You know, we can't just go on opinions. You know, you can't, you know, 
you can't just think, oh, this is wrong just because I think it's wrong or I feel like it's wrong, you know. We need evidence to show it's wrong, you know. I feel like it's, um, you know, it's very, like, disingenuous to um, want to ignore facts and, yeah. you know, information that we have, you know, to arrive at a conclusion that suits our narrative or how we, you know, how we think, like, and I know people can be quite dogmatic in their beliefs and everything else, I mean, so... Like it's nothing new. Do you, do you know what I'm saying to you? Like right. I know. So I think, I, think like, I know that if someone's on this live right now, yeah. who is convinced that every black person is a piece of shit, mm. this chat will not change their mind. Yeah. And if there's someone in there who thinks every white person is racist, this chat won't change their mind because their mind is already made up. You know. Mm. So they're not even listening to what anyone's saying. You know. They're just waiting to push what they think and try and impose that thought on everyone else. So, uh, you know, this is nothing that, so I, I understand that people are going to feel how they feel and sometimes nothing will change that, you know, we've seen that, you know, when we discuss religion, you know, when we discuss cultural things that people, people defend certain beliefs of the absolute life, you know, and then sometimes that can be changed. No, I hear that. Someone said correlation is not causation. So the absence of A hundred percent. So, um... Um, Dara said, Alex is right. Emotions or opinion are taking precedence over facts in the current climate. Um, and then so, Mass said, what about solutions? Said, what do you think would resolve tensions right now? What would resolve tensions right now is, for a start, let's control the way we're venting our anger, right? Because what I've seen recently is I'm seeing a lot of resentment coming out of people and it's misdirected, right? Do you mean? Mm -hmm. Now, what's happening is you're offending people that you don't mean to offend, you know? You're causing a separation between people who are actually on your side, mm -hmm. you know? And then we're having an infighting when we're actually all on the same page. Like I said, most people, white or black or in between, agree on this George Floyd situation. Mm -hmm. Now, we all agree on it. So then why are we bickering, you know, Oh, like, you know, over the issue. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you get what I'm saying to you? So we need to be able to know where we're directing our frustrations to, you know, and you know, and how we're voicing our opinions, you uh, know, because yeah. I mean, everyone, you know, you know, everyone going off now being emotionally charged and, you know, be, you know, just notice, not thinking carefully about what they're putting out there, right? Because it's so heat at the moment, stuff, you know, you know everything's flying out. Do you mean so? It's mm -hmm. like we're not being the more subjective and unfortunately we're damaging you know things along the way while trying to do the right thing you know they you, you know they say that in the um you know the road to hell is paved with good intentions right do you mean that like sometimes you know then you know the in intentions are good but the way we're applying things is you know isn't right mm -hmm. you know like that like this is what we should be doing now like you know we're having a conversation and like i'm not shutting you out you're not shutting me out no one in the comments is going to shut anyone out. Do you mean like, no, you know, no one's trying to score points or be right or with an argument, you know. Mm. We're simply just talking about the issue openly mm. and trying to make progress, yeah. you know. And, and, and obviously, no. that, no, more, that, that's what has to be done. Yeah, I hear you, I hear you. And someone just said something interesting. I was going to counter what you said. They said, hard to think clear if you have been a victim of white on black real racism. So this is a point I was going to make. It, it is hard for people to think clearly or to be dem democratic in, in their responses i feel like it's tensions that have been brewing for years and i've just tweeted this now um i said people are sick and tired of being sick and tired so i feel like everything that's happening right now is a combination of a lot of things that have happened over time and it's not just we're reacting to this today this is just like okay this is now an outlet for a reason or or a, a passageway for us to let out everything that's been brewing for such a long time yeah, but also, okay, like, you know what, this is, and this is the thing, yeah, so, some of this conversation, yeah, part of it was going to be, it's going to be easy, right? Yeah. And part of it is going to be difficult, do you know what I mean? So now, for us black people, this part of it here now is difficult, right? Because what do you believe in as a black man sitting there, like, you know, what do you care for? Like, what do you want, you know, out of life? I'm asking you, what do you, think, you know, you know, what do you want? Now, you know, what is um, what's important to you? The things, the things that are important to me is people having a shared understanding, the concept of equality and being able to be independent of mind as well, right? So allowing people yeah. to live their lives, but also allowing yourself to to think for yourself. That's that's my concept of altruism. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. Live and let live, but also be independent in your thinking. So is that it? You know, is that the only thing that matters to you? Currently, at the minute? This, this climate, but in terms of personal personal growth, it would be the concept of success, right? So financial success, family success, success and health. Yeah. So, so for me, you know, as a black guy, what matters to me is complete, you know, complete ascension, you know, of my people. Yeah, which means I want, I don't want to see any reckless or unjust, you know, or senseless violence that leads to lives being lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to see mm -hmm. poverty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to see discrimination, you know, mm -hmm. and injustice. And when I say this, I mean from any flipping direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I don't want to see senseless killings of black people by black people or by white people. I just don't want to see it full stop. Mm. Yeah. So I'm not going to go harder on the white guy for killing me or mm. if I'm not going to go as hard on the black boy for killing me as well. Mm. So it's like you have to be clear on what you stand for, you know. I don't stand for senseless violence. I don't care who's coming from, where it's coming from. I don't stand for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. So that's one thing I stand. You know, that's one thing that I stand for, and that's why, unlike most people, I will not bypass, you know, certain points to only speak on racism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that is very disingenuous. Like, what do you really believe in? Like, if you really believe in, you know, a peaceful world, then you have to address all the chaos. You know, mm -hmm. and the fact of the matter is, the biggest chaos that affects black people is from black people. Like, that is the biggest chaos. You know, you've got more chances of being killed by another black person mm -hmm. than being killed by a white police officer, you know. Now, you might get killed by a white police officer, but in general, you've got more chances of being killed by one of your own than someone else. So, so, then, how, so, so then how the hell do we say yeah. that we are against this and we want a safe world to live in, but we choose to not want to address this elephant in the room mm -hmm. that's there? It has to be addressed, you know. Yeah, I, think, I think someone said this earlier, and... Um, Aqua Diesel just said it as well. She said, yes, um, black on black crime. So the thing is, um, I don't know, this this view, this concept of addressing um, this black on black crime or the damage that we do on ourselves, I think we need to we need to consider, again, like you said in the beginning, the root of those problems, right? I don't think the concept of black on black crime is just a black and white thing. You get what I'm saying? I think, um, let's, say, let's say, let's talk about Africa, right? Black and black crime is a negative, right? Because it's only black people, for the most part, not yeah. countries, right? But then, not all black people are committing crimes against each other. It's usually the poverty structure that tend to commit crimes against each other. So the people that tend to be in certain classes, the crimes are very different. Of course, we'll have white collar crime, but those are different levels of crime, yeah? But if we're talking about physical violence, theft, robbery, damage, it's usually from the lower classes, poverty stricken. And then there's a question of where does that come from? And people say, again, it links into the racial um, situations that these people have been put in through life. They're in the lower classes because of social economic factors, because of political factors, and because of the structure of, of the racial inequities in their society causing them to react and respond accordingly. They're out of the place in the society, so they can't actually adjust accordingly, and thus they react in these ways that we consider uncivilized. Because these kind of crimes yeah. are very rare in, in upper middle class areas, and there's a reason for that. It's yeah, and that's fine. Right. So, yeah, so then, yeah, so then, okay, if we look in our community and we go, right, you know what, there is a, a big, like, you know, economic, like, you know, disparity, mm -hmm. and obviously, this is what causes crime in the area. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, how do we solve that? Mm -hmm. You know, we have to find a way to elevate in that, in that respect. Which means, because listen, you can be wherever you are in this world in that year. How you choose to come out of that is up to you. Yeah, mm. people have come out from situations worse than yours, or from the same as yours, and done well with themselves. I mean, like you know, they've made better choices, right? I mean, so what is the culture that we have within ourselves, right? I mean, 100%. so I should be locally in my area telling the kids how important it is to take school seriously. You know. And you know, and get good, you know, good education, because yeah. that's probably going to put you in a better stance, you know, to get a better job. 
you know, or to start your own business, you know, and to make more money, you know, and to elevate you, you know, out, you know, out of this rut that you're in, you know, not pushing you to be a trapper, you know, mm. or be, you know, or be this or be that. So until that, every issue that's there, there's a way to solve it, right? But to solve these issues, you have to be honest with yourself, yeah? People, people know better, yeah? People like you, you can teach young people the importance of having good credit, you know, and how to build good credit. You know, because good credit is going to help you get a mortgage, right? It's going to help you, you know, can help you get a business, can help you get loans, it can help you do a lot of things, it can help you change your life. Mm. No one's doing that, right? Mm. No one's asking these kids, okay, you're in school, what are you struggling with? You know, are you struggling with maths? I'm good at maths, I can help you out. Mm. You know, when that, we're not stressing the importance, you know, because listen, in the West, yeah, mm. in the West where we're living now, the only thing that really matters is money, yeah? Mm. Yeah. It, but for the most part, it doesn't matter what you believe. Like you know, if you know, if someone thinks you can make them a lot of money, they're going to hire you. You know, they're going to use you. you no, know? they don't care. You know, where you're from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the way that we can even you know control racism in that respect is that we have to be in a position of power ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, economically, because then people have to trade with you and work with you, and they will find it, you know, a lot more. Um, of a nuisance to not want to engage you. Like, it won't benefit them to not engage you. You get what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. So, you have to, you know, we have to build certain things, you know, and put people in a position of strength, you know, make them stronger rather than handicapping them. Do you know what I'm saying to you? Yeah. So, if I'm telling, like, I'm not going to ever tell my daughter, yeah, that racism is a big obstacle she's going to face in her life. Mm. Yeah. Because I'm not going to infiltrate, like, you know, um, infiltrate her mind with weakness, yeah. I'm not going to make her start doubting herself, you know, from a young age, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make her start losing her self-confidence, thinking, oh, I won't be able to achieve something because I'm a black girl, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm not pushing that bullshit on my daughter, yeah, because we all know that, you know, what the mind believes, you know, you you know, you can achieve. Like, like mm -hmm. everyone knows the importance of, like, you know, of mental, you know, of, of mental outlook and what you're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell her the importance of having good credit, the importance of studying, the importance of being conscientious, the importance of being hardworking, the importance of having good judgment, yeah? Because when you have these things, chances are you're going to end up in a better place in life, mm -hmm. yeah? If you don't have these things, you probably won't be in a good place in life, yeah? But I'm not going to put any sort of doubt or weakness in, you know, you know, in their mind to make her feel like there's this big invisible obstacle that she's going to face and it's going to hold her back. And then she, as a result, she's going to start trying less. Yeah. yeah? So, the things you believe in that hold you back mentally yeah. will chip away at your self-confidence, whether you, you know, whether you realize it or not. And it's going to affect what you believe you can do. Yeah. You know, no, I feel you. I feel you now. I, I believe wholeheartedly in the power of education. And I think you and I, that's definitely something we both strongly agree on the, the impact of education today to you and, you know I mean? For the future. And, the conversation becomes, okay, I'll reference um, a, a guy called Daryl Davis, right? So Daryl Davis was a guy that converted over 200 um, KKK members, Ku Klux, Ku, Klux Klan, Ku Klux Klan members in America, a black guy. He converted, right? Quote, unquote, converted. And his story is really interesting, right? But one thing he points out in terms of the root of a lot of people's problems is not just socioeconomic, the education. You get what I'm saying? Um <coughs> And I guess that's what it is, right? Because a child grows to be what they learn. Our experiences are shaped by what we learn. What we learn in, in, in school, right? What we learn yeah. in so primary and secondary socialization, right? You can't deny the power of education. But then, like a lot of people are saying in these comments now, not all education is equal. Not everyone, number one, receives the same type of education at the same level. Not, not all educators slash teachers, professors are actually good educators and actually good at what they do and can actually provide a good education for children, a.k.a. a good future. And not every mm -hmm. student can actually learn the same way. So I'm just reading these comments. These are the kind of things that people are saying. Like, there's various factors within education. But a lot of people are pushing this drive to start our own school. The concept of black education, black-centric education, yeah. and stuff like that. What you think? Yeah, it's, you know... It... You know, we can open black schools, that's fine. But at the, at the end of the day, you know, if you don't have the the right people in those schools with the right mentality and the right goal and objective, it's not going to be beneficial. Like, you know, and we don't have to have black schools, you know. Like, you know, you can have more black people can go into teaching, you know. 
more, more, you know, we can go into teaching, you know, we, and education is not just in school, it's in life, you know, it's what you allow in your home. So your kids are with you, like, you know, we can educate them ourselves, you know, in, in, you know, in the house, we can discuss things in the house. It's not just always about school, do you know what I'm saying to you? Like, you know, like the, 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 the school system thing, right, people have their opinions, right, whether it's good or bad, you know, there's some people who opt to homeschool their kids, Mm. Right, because they feel like it's not, it's, it's you know, it's a better alternative. Like, I can't speak for everyone, but all I can say is education is not something that is only limited to schools. Like, you know, we still have an impact, you know, that we can have on educating ourselves and our community, right? And, you know, and our, you know, and our kids, you know, and more of us can be, you know, can be, you know, go and be a teacher, you know, what you listen, we can all teach something, right? Because we're all good at something and we all know something, right? You mean? So I, we can I, all teach something. I, I think I think that point of education becomes mentorship. Then you get what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I think it becomes a, a, a concept of having people who have who have experienced a little bit more of life, having people who do have that knowledge and who do have that mindset that you're talking about, which is the open-mindedness, the concept of helping others, and the concept of altruism, which is to help your fellow man, etc. And then yeah. those people become the mentors that bring up the children that you're talking about because it becomes the impact becomes wider than what they learn in school. It becomes the yeah. life skills, life lessons that we're talking about that get yeah. filtered down to those children and the future generations. And I think mentorship is a, a huge thing. And I think we should promote that a lot more. Because when I work in corporate spaces, currently where I work right now, yeah. I'm like it would have been great to have someone like me to bring me up in somewhere like this. Exactly. Like, every exactly. Corporate space that I go into is the same thing. I'm just like were underrepresented, not just underrepresented in terms of race, which is a huge thing, but underrepresented in terms of mentality. There's a lot of people that's like they have a dog eat dog world thing. They're about yeah. they're not really about upbringing and, and uplifting people below them. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And I think what you're saying that's a key point. The education is bigger than just in schools. It's the people that educate, right? Yeah. You know, let's say you know it's like it. You know, I can teach. You know, the people around me the importance of eating healthy and trading and, you know, you know, and being a healthy person and, you know, looking after your health, you know, mm. you know, if you work in finance, you can teach you know, people around you about finance, you know, about managing finance, you know, you can teach them that, you know, you can teach them about taxes, you can, mm. you can teach them about, you know, teach them about, you know, all sorts of things, you know, good credit, you know, doing this, you know, fixing bad credit, you know, mm. Mm. if you, you know, if you're an estate agent, you know, you can teach people around you, on, you know how the system works. You know, mm. like how do you get involved? You know, in a rent to rent. How do you get involved in a buy? You know, you know, in a buy to rent. You know, how do you get? You know, how do you get a first? You know, like, there's always something that can be taught by people. You know, because in all walks of life, right? You know, we have people like ourselves in there. Mm. So the mentality has to be: we have to be collectively be about trying to empower other people and help other people and not be selfish, because obviously when we're selfish, not a lot is getting accomplished. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying to you? Like, there's people, you know, who see young kids bunk in school. I won't, you know, I won't put them about it. You know, they leave them to that. That's cool. Like, you, know, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you know, do your thing. Mm -hmm. You know, like, that's not helping. <laughs> you know what I'm saying to like, you know, like, that's not helping. You know, we talk about crime, you know. Mm. Most of the, listen, most of the young kids, you know, in our neighborhoods that are out selling drugs and being involved in violence and that, you know, are being groomed but older black people, that should know better. People yeah. our ages and above, you should know better, you know. They're recruiting young people to know out there to ruin their lives, you know. Like, those are the cancer, you know, in the community. Like, yeah. that is the problem, yeah? Because mm -hmm. you're showing people, or, or you're leading them out down a path that you know is destructive, ultimately, you know, for your own personal gain. Yeah. So you're willing to sacrifice, you know, other people for yourself. You know, and we're not addressing this. I mean, like, you know, no one's speaking in this. Like, you know, every, you, know you know, everyone's leaving it. You know, we're having, you know, young kids from our communities, you know, being grabbed and sent to countries. If I can go and, um, you know, go and hustle and, you know, and we're not on waste of lives. And then they're caught up in this, you know, in this trap. And people of our age and older who know better, mm. are, you know, are the ones endorsing it. Mm. So then, you know, you know, so then where do we go from there? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, how... It's, it's literally you, you the know, whole... If, if you knew better, you do better. If they knew better, they do better kind of situation, right? And, um, yeah, you're talking about, like, people, my youngers and my olders. If your olders are people that are self-respecting members of society, then the youngers will become the same thing, right? The apple yeah. won't fall too far from the tree. I 100% 100 agree with that. Um, Someone said that they started cutting off the um, the funding to mentor, mentorship teams. This is an interesting thing as well. We, we spoke a little bit about finance and economy and classism. Bro, like, 
I'm part of it and a couple of my friends are part of it. It's part of this mentor schemes whereby you invest a certain amount of money to be mentored by people that mentored by millionaires basically, millionaires and billionaires. You get what I'm saying? But in order to get to that level, you need to be able to pay. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a lot yeah. of us, um, middle class, lower class communities, we don't really have people that have enough time. Or maybe we don't make enough time, but I, I do feel like we need to create a collective that's like, look, it's not about the money. It is about the concept of the, the, the loving people, right? The, the, the community concept. We need to be able to sacrifice something to allow our younger people to actually evolve. Yeah, definitely. And I can know. Sacrifice is it's important. The, it's the money thing that always comes into play, but I don't know if it's money that needs to be put in here, but as, there's power in it, numbers, right? It's, it, it, you, know, it's not, you know, it's not all about money, you know? Like, you know, I'm going to give, you know, people around me information that can benefit them for free, you know. You don't have to pay me for that, you know. I'm going to do it because it needs to be done. Yeah. Because in my life, pe people have helped me the same way and given me information as, you know, on certain things. Do you know what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. Like, and this is why it's important to to speak and do the right thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, this conversation that we're having right here could have easily been skipped, you know. It didn't have to happen, mm -hmm. you know. But is it right to not want to open a good discussion with people where we can hopefully leave with some better tools and a better way of looking at things. To me, like, you know, we can't just skip things. You know what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Like, you it's, care, um, you, care, you, you know, make that effort, isn't it? Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, if you care, you make effort, you know, you sacrifice, you know, you, you, yeah. you know, you do things like, you know, this is how, this, this is how we close the gap in general. Mm. Yeah, because life is a competition when you start off, you mean, you know, and you close the gap by strengthening yourself and, you know, improving your positioning, you know, that's how, you know, we get to a place where, things are better overall. Mm. You know what I'm saying to you? Like, it's, um, you know, you don't have to be subject, you know, to harsh effects, yeah. you know, of a defective system, right? Do you mean? Because, you know, if, you, if you make yourself stronger mm. and better, mm. you might be able to avoid that. Do you know what I'm saying to you? You know, mm. like, mm. you know, say you, you, you know, say, you, I mean, you know, you work in a corporate world, right? I mean, mm. if you had, you know, say on the same street, you know, this, you know, the exact same profession, you know, exact same business, you know, but one's black owned, you know, one's white owned, one's Asian owned, whatever you mean. It, it, it now means that, you know, as a black person, if you go to the white owned one to go and get a job and you feel like they're looking down on you, mm. you've got the option to go to the black one, you know, to go and try there. Same, you know, Asian, you know, you, like, you can leave where you don't feel appreciated. I mean, you know, the way you can, you know, stop the impact, you know, of racism affecting you yeah. is, is putting yourself in a better place where it doesn't have to affect you, you know, yeah. where you can, you know, you can bypass it, you know, yeah. because put it this way, the, you know, the, the struggles people face varies depending on where you are, mm -hmm. how much money you've got and who you're around. Okay. Yeah. So there's some black people who could never be able to relate to some black people. Yeah. Okay. They, okay. they live totally different lives, you know, like absolutely totally like totally different lives, you know. Yeah. Even their own kids, like, you know, like Jay Z's kid can never relate to Jay Z himself. Yeah. Because he never even grew up in a world remotely close to, you know, but that's not to say that he won't have his own issues, yeah. you know, because there'll be different issues, you know what I'm saying to you. Yeah. So it's like self improvement, you know, self awareness, you know, I believe is a very important factor in moving forward in you know, under any circumstance. Honestly. Yeah, you know, like the quickest thing you can change is yourself and your surroundings. 100%. Yeah? yeah. That's the easiest thing we can change, you know. Yeah. And that's the one change that we're not doing, yeah. you know. We're screaming, you know, outside, like outside the window, looking at the problem, but we won't look in the mirror, you know, and look at the problem. Like we're screaming outside, you know. Mm -hmm. We want, like, you know, everyone is saying we want racing to go away. How will it go away? Mm -hmm. You know, no one has an answer, you know. So then, why are we shouting it? Like, it's, you know, are, are we just saying it for the, you know, for effect, or do we really mean it? 100%. You know, I, I, what I we can do is change what we can do ourselves. Yeah, dude, you're hundred percent right, man. I think, and this is the whole thing that stems this conversation. I think, like we said, a lot of people are screaming, "We have a problem," but then they're not coming up with the answers. And I think the answers come from these kind of conversations. But these kind of conversations happening everywhere. You get what I'm saying? With mm -hmm. like-minded people that are actually serious about getting things done. Because a lot of people out there just for shits and giggles. And a lot of people out there because they're just angry, but they don't know how to deal. You get what I'm saying? So we yeah. need to have these conversations that actually allow people to express themselves and then to come up with solutions and become a collective. 
because everything that's happening here, the gangs, the police, the, the government, everyone is collective. They all have a shared interest and all invested in the same thing at the same time. That's exactly. how they evoke change. And we need to do that, implement that within our cultures, our cultures as well. You know exactly. I mean, you know, I mean, same as, you know, I mean, you know, if you've got a friend that you know is your friend and you know that he's got a child with someone that he doesn't go and see or look after, mm. don't be his friend no more. Mm. Pull him up. Mm. Yeah. Because we know that the kids who have both parents in their lives will probably have a better chance than those who don't. Mm. You know, now, not saying, now, of course, you've got exceptions to the rules, right? I mean, because there are people who, you know, there's always, you know, there's always outliers, right? I mean, you know, yeah. On any given circuit, but I'm saying it's it's things like that, yeah. you know, it's things that we see, you know, things that surround us, things that we, you know, things that we ignore, things like the people, like the people out there. Yeah, you can't you know, do things because they seem small, they seem so small, but the impact you're, you're changing someone's it, life. It matters. You mean you know, like this is how the community changes, though, know, because you know, there's people growing up, you know, without father figures yeah. or fathers in their lives, and their fathers aren't dead. You know, yeah. that someone being irresponsible living their life and their friends are enabling them and no one's you know, ever listen me personally you could never nah, never like, be my friend and nah, if i know you've got a kid somewhere that you haven't shown any interest in like never lead them like you them like, like you will not be in my surrounding though know? you will not come into my house you're not coming around me yeah i don't respect you as a man i don't respect you yeah so you have to go and fix up if i can respect you and have you around me mm. you know what i'm saying to you like some, like you know, some of us are going out with, you know, going out to raves, you know, with your dickhead friends mm. that, that, you know, that you know, aren't doing anything to help mm. anyone or or help themselves or help people around them, but they're your fucking friends, right? You know, yeah. you know, you, you know, you're going out with them, like yeah. it's bullshit. Yeah, yeah? people are like, people don't ever want to, you know, self-analyze and evaluate themselves and fix up themselves because you know what? It's very uncomfortable. Mm. It's, mm. You know, it's extremely uncomfortable to put you. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's not, it, it's not fun. Yeah. But it has to be done. Has Simple as that. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. now, Alex, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you, my guy. Everyone, we've got one minute left, you know what I mean? So I just want to thank everyone for chipping in. Alex, as usual, my guy, you've been dropping gems, bro. And um, like I said, when I when we're face-to-face -face again, we'll do the podcast properly. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, and everyone, thanks a lot again for tuning in, man. Like, if you don't yeah, watch thanks, Alex, everyone, man. Follow him. You feel me? Everyone, thanks for, thanks for joining us and taking your time, man. Thanks, Love, everyone. Love, guys. Um, we're going to have a few more sessions like this. And in terms of the solution that Alex has kind of proposed, I've written them all down and I'll share them on my story and potentially on my actual, actual IG page as well. So, um, yeah, it's a step-by-step -step process. And I think we're working in the right way, man. So, Alex, love, my guy. Everyone, love. Yo, peace, bro. Love, man. Take care, okay, guys. Peace. <laughs> What's it called? No silicone. No silicone. No silicone. Okay. Keeping it raw, keeping it real, real.